In this section, we're going to be talking about redefining success. Now, one of the reasons why this is so important is because without knowing it, we oftentimes can get caught up in the momentum of defining success in a way that we necessarily would not have defined it before. So let me give you an example. Um, when I first started in direct sales, uh, which I'm not in direct sales anymore, but when I first started in direct sales, my goals were pretty modest. I wanted to be able to make enough money to feed my family, pay the bills, um, you know, have a little bit extra put away. I just didn't want to have to worry about money. It didn't occur to me that I didn't actually want to work 24 hours a day. I didn't necessarily know what I wanted my life to look like. I just knew that I wanted to be able to make a certain amount of money. And that's how I defined success at the time. And I really started to think about it and I got really caught up in the idea of making money. I need more sales. I need more money. I need more money. And it became really about the next sale, right? Nonstop next sale. And at the same time as I was trying to make more money through sales, I was in a direct sales company where the community around me was all very excited about pushing that next barrier. What's that next sale milestone that you can hit? If you sold 500 this much, uh, 500 this month, how much can you sell next month? If you sell a thousand this month, how much can you sell the month after? If you sold 50,000, what can you sell after? It was always about chasing the higher sale, the getting that dopamine hit for like, ooh, I can sell more, I can sell more, I can sell more. And that happened, you know, I found myself caught up in that momentum, like pretty excessively. And I didn't realize until I, a year or so into it that I was, I felt like I was a hamster, like a hamster on a wheel or that I was a, on a treadmill that was going just too fast for me to keep up. So I was like having to run really hard just to stay on the treadmill, but I wasn't getting anywhere, right? So I was working all the time, trying to achieve these goals of making tons and tons of money. Um, I was, and I never saw my family. And one day I sat back and I really like was trying to take stock of how did I get here? right? How did I get to this space where my entire life is consumed by what I'm selling? And I realized that it had a lot to do with my definition of success, right? I wanted to feel like uh, I was in control of my finances. And so for me, that meant making more money, right? More money in order to be in control of my finances. Simple, right? That makes perfect sense. And my husband and I started to have a lot of extensive conversations at this time because he really started to get involved in uh, financial management, understanding our overall family landscape, how much debt did we have, how much money do we have coming in, things like that, right? So now we're, we're working together to kind of resolve this, this problem, right? One of the things that we talked about was, okay, well, what do you, you know, what does success look like to you, right? So I, you know, I said, oh, I want to be able to make this much money and, and that, and he said, no, 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 like, let's look at it a little bit differently. So we went through this exercise and this, this mental exercise really made, it's a thought exercise that makes a really huge difference towards understanding what it is that you're actually trying to achieve and how sometimes we get derailed because we don't realize that um, we've changed the goal on us, right? So let's say, for example, I'm going to put you through that same thought exercise like right now. Okay, so this is what we did. Imagine if right now I came up to you and I said, I'm going to give you a million dollars, right? Because many of us, if I said, okay, what are your goals? You're going to give me some sales goals, the dollar amount that you want to hit. And usually those goals are like immediate. I need to hit them like right now. I'm like, okay, right. So I'm going to give you a million dollars based off of what I just said, right? In terms of if that's your, if that's what you're trying to do is hit financial goals, then uh, getting a million dollars is great, right? So I hand you a million dollars and now I say, okay, do you think that you are a millionaire right now? You have a million dollars in hand. You can spend it, do whatever you want with it. Are you a millionaire? Your response is going to be, yeah, totally. Like, I mean, forget about taxes and all that stuff. You're getting the million dollars for you, right? So yes, I have a million dollars, okay? So now you're suddenly feeling really, really great. You're like, I have a million dollars. You're thinking to yourself in your head, oh my goodness, what can I spend it on? What can I do? Like your whole life is starting to change in your mind, right? What if instead I tell you, okay, I'm going to give you a million dollars, still getting the million dollars, but it's different this time. This time I'm actually putting it in a glass cage. Okay. It's in a little glass box that's locked and you cannot break it. You cannot access it. You have the money for the rest of your life. You can give it to your children. They can give it to their children. This money is yours forever, but you can never touch it and you can never do anything with it. Right now, suddenly that moment of excitement that you had when I said I was giving you a million dollars, now suddenly that's gone. Okay, now you're feeling like, really? You give me a million dollars and then you say, I can't use it and you put it in this box. But technically speaking, you have a million dollars, right? You have a million dollars right now. You are still a millionaire by definition, by every definition of the term, you are a millionaire, 
right? So both scenarios, you have a million dollars, but in one scenario, you can use that million dollars. And in the second scenario, you can't, which leads to the question is, is it the million dollars that you actually want? And the answer is, is no, you, the, the million dollars aren't actually relevant. What's relevant is what you were going to do with that million dollars. Like, what is it in your mind when I said I was going to give you those million dollars? What is it that you thought that you could do with it? For me, when I think about it, I thought, okay, I would be able to pay off debt, right? So this is an exercise we did uh, probably, I think, in, you know, 2016, 2017-ish, right, ish. Um, I pay off debt. Um, we would be able to pay our bills on a regular basis without having to worry about them, you know, at all, right? No, no worrying about whether we're going to be late or, or where I put things on credit cards and then pay off the credit card and then make money to pay off the credit card and then put more things on credit cards. We all know that game. We've all played that game before, right? Ultimately, that was the, you know, that was my goal was to make it so that we had financial stability. Um, and I didn't have to worry about money because for me, what I realized was it was about having enough money to pay the bills so that I didn't worry about money. That was actually what I wanted. That is my definition of success, right? So I started to think about it and I realized, okay, so there is one way of doing this, which is make more money, but there's another way of doing it as well, right? I can actually find a way to design the life that I want to live and figure out how to reduce my expenses so that I don't need to make as much money, okay? Now, that's going to sound like, for many of us, that sounds ridiculous. We're like, well, yes, of course. Of course we're doing that. But the thing is, we don't spend a lot of time looking at our finances. We don't spend a lot of time monitoring it at the intricate level. So in our minds, the way to hit our goals is always to sell more, bring in more money. The problem is, is that as you bring in more money, you automatically start to spend more money. And when you automatically start to spend more money, you find that now you need to make more money. And so you get in this cycle that ultimately ends up you know, destroying you mentally because you feel like you're always on this rat race to make more money. So by redefining success to being not about the cash money that you're trying to make, you're instead redefining success into being about how do you want to feel? What do you want your life to look like? And what does that actually cost, right? Reasonably speaking, what does that actually cost? So my husband and I went through this entire exercise and we have a training that will walk you through the with walk you through the step by step financial process of this if that's something that you want to follow but for the moment what I want to encourage you to do is take some time today and think about what you would do with a million dollars. So what I want to encourage you to do today is take some time and think about how you currently define success. Are you defining success based on your own terms, something that you really want? Or have you been caught up in the momentum of your direct sales company, in the momentum of what you thought you wanted, in the momentum of the Cosmo article that says women can have it all, girl power, we can do everything and still look great doing it. What defines success for you? And is it your own definition or is it that you have allowed other people, media, your upline, your sideline, your home office, your friends, your family, your parents, your sisters, whoever it is, are you allowing them to decide what your definition of success is. Because oftentimes, one of the reasons why we struggle so much with being quote unquote successful is because we're busy chasing a goal that isn't ours. We're busy trying to run a race that someone else put us on. And when we sit back and look at what our actual goals are, what is it? Why did you get into your business in the first place? Why did you start your business? Are you doing the things that you started your business for? Or are you doing other things? Do you spend your time with your family, which is one of the things that I'm pretty sure most of us started our businesses for. We started our businesses so we could be home with our families more often and you'll see a, a lot more of mom because I'm home now. Do they actually see a lot more of you or do you find yourself spending more and more time working and even when you're with your kids, you spend time on your phone. Is that what you want your life to look like? Is that what success looks like to you? So before you move on to the next lesson, spend some time considering what your definition of success is now how it got here, and if that really is how you define a successful life, what looks, what does a successful life look like to you? And then we'll move on into how to turn that success into a reality.